We're here at ITU Telecom World 2015 in Budapest, Hungary, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Anusha Rahman Khan, who is Minister of State for the Government of Pakistan, the Ministry of Information and Technology in Islamabad. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I wanted to find out what measures can government and industry do to encourage entrepreneurship and foster the growth of SMEs in the ICT sector and in particular of course what's the government of Pakistan doing? Uh, thank you very much for uh, putting these points on for discussion. Uh, yes, this morning we have been discussing uh, these issues and we're talking about not just MS SMEs alone but also about startups and incubator programs and innovation. Um, as you will appreciate that innovation is now something that even youngsters, people who are still studying, small children, who we consider as children, are coming up with the brightest of ideas. So we have to look at when we're talking about innovation, when we're talking about growth, when we're talking about knowledge economies, we should be talking about across the board segments, uh, irrespective of the age, and focus also on the youth at the same time. Um, this um, innovation has brought our generation to where we are today and we have come to a stage where even the teenagers are questioning whether we are on the right direction looking at the future technologies if we are adopting the right strategies, right policies, giving them the right framework and guidelines which are going to have technology being adopted for as engine of growth. So SMEs remain at the heart of our policy framework uh, in Pakistan. I would like to share with you that, uh, um, at least from my experience, what we have done in Pakistan, we are working on incubation programs for picking up entrepreneurship, uh, for encouraging entrepreneurship, and uh, partnering with international uh, companies to bring in the right kind of the human resource capital who have championed it in, in the developed countries. Um, and also giving the confidence to the sector that the public sector is aware of uh, the very fact that the, 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 the youth and the SMEs are looked at, are being focused at, uh, investment is going on into their growth and the outcomes of these, this entrepreneurship program is going to be um, either the venture capitalists are going to pick up their innovation or the government itself creating the demand side uh, of it by adopting e-governance and e-solutions is going to be now looking at their solutions that they are providing for permanent implementation. So these are all opportunities that are being created in my country. Um, talking about uh, opportunities for, um, for the IT sector, I would like to just share with you that in Pakistan today, I have a database of 2,000 plus companies who are uh, exporting soft, uh, software worth of over 2.8 billion US dollars. Um, we are number four in the e-lancing, which means that we are just behind US, UK, and Ukraine. Uh, 75,000 e-lancers in the country who are exporting to the world. So you can imagine that um, the policies of the government and together with the freedom for entrepreneurship in our country is giving us the, the results. Um, but this is not enough. Uh, we uh, need to work more on um, providing opportunities. Um, this incubation center, the Tech City project that we are floating now, um, is for uh, targeting about 50 companies every six months on rotation. Uh, looking at uh, looking at their their uh, their projects, looking at their innovation, and looking at giving them the first opportunity for getting commercialized. There's something which uh, we have been uh, for a number of years at ITU focusing on, on very greatly is encouraging women and girls to get involved in ICTs. I know sure. it's, it's something that's uh, obviously close to your heart as mm -hmm. well. We're celebrating girls in ICT here at ITU Telecom World. From your own experience. What can be done to promote the involvement of girls and women in the industry? The first thing that we need to do is to accept the fact that girls and women need special attention when it comes to ICTs. Uh, this realization definitely exists at the ITU, this realization exists at my ministry definitely. Um, we, are, we have started different projects for girls in ICT, but one of the projects that's worth sharing is by the name of Program. 
uh, we've already uh, from the from the from the funding which is available for the underserved and unserved uh, we have designed a project together with a virtual university which is our partner uh, to reach out to 5000 girls every year in the most in the most underserved area the poor segments of the girls who otherwise cannot continue to uh, continue their education for one reason or the other and they opt for learning some technical skills so if they are going to learn some technical skills computer programming is what we are designing for them to be taught not only that we are going to teach them how to program but we will be providing infrastructure in those institutions which are specifically designed for these girls but we will also be on their graduation providing them one laptop so that they could work as entrepreneurs from their homes um one of the operators has committed as part of their share to provide connectivity to these girls when they graduate from uh, this program so the idea is not to turn them into typists the idea is to teach them innovation to teach them how to program to give them the certification accreditation giving them the hardware and help them and mentor them throughout for them to stand on their own feet so that this is the age segment of between 14 to 18 that we are targeting so this is particularly for for girls um but i think going forward um we need to not be within the within the within the gender we will have to create the categories that how do we address the girls how do we address the beyond teenager a and how do we even address our older segments because they it's not just about turning them into economically vibrant and independent females it's also about um it, introducing them to technology to stay connected and the more women are connected you will have more mothers more families uh, more people using the internet and it's about having the proliferation of the internet usage uh, over a period of time so that as more women use the internet you will have more usage of the internet and when you have more usage of the internet you have the more utility uh, coming out of it now of course the uh key words at the moment are sustainable development goals i wanted to ask you what must be done in your opinion to better link icts uh, to sustainable development goals or sdgs at national and international level there is a need to uh, first of all um, work on a national agenda uh, the national agenda is going to be driven by the nation states together uh, formulating some guidelines formulating some kpis formulating some given targets icts for sustainable development is goal number 17 of the of the un that, that we have just passed adopted um we, uh, there there is a need to identify which agency is going to be the custodian of the sdgs in terms of the ict connect then we need to all sit down and define Uh, i would not want um the same to be repeated for because mdgs was not sort of adopted or implemented with as much success as we expected of it so for the sdgs we need a more serious um we need to take a more serious approach for the implementation side of it but i would say but many countries would be working on sdgs already even before the even before this formal adoption for example i can share with you my experience that we decided that the universal service fund um will be a model uh, will be modeled in a way that it will be a public private partnership which means that the entire fund will be available uh to the private sector for deployment so i will share with you one example uh just 4 weeks ago um i have finalized uh, four contracts for development uh, for laying down of rural telephony which means that uh, with the private sector which means that uh, the areas which are otherwise not making a commercial case for the mobile operators which is essentially more than 35% of pakistan uh, the government of pakistan is giving subsidy which can which is around between 90 to 95% to the mobile operators so that they can provide connectivity and roll out their networks in those areas so we have done a subsidy of 14 billion rupees um for for now, for these these contracted areas 
uh, in the last four months for the rollout to be complete within the next 18 months. But at the same time, we have also mapped the rest of the country where, which is not otherwise on the business case of the, country, of the mobile operators. And after mapping it out, we are gradually giving out the lots from the USF funding, and whoever is going to ask for minimum subsidy, and that minimum is also around 95 to 96 percent, 90 to 95 percent, to give out this subsidy to the telecom operators, who are the contributors in, to begin with, to complete the whole country and cover it with broadband, whether through mobile broadband or whether through optic fiber cable, this is a choice that they will come forward with. But we are giving them the flexibility to make their offer. Uh, so what I see is that within the next two years, uh, we, will have, uh, we will have covered most of Pakistan with uh, mobile broadband. People were joking with me uh, the other day that we've done the 3G, 4G spectrum auction, and they were saying to me that by the, or this program that you have recently introduced, this policy of the government will actually mean that the part of the countries who were not going to get 3G services even th in the next 10 years are going to get the 3G services even within the next 18 months. But this is the agenda of my government, to, to reach out to the underserved and unserved, to go for ubiquitous development, uniform development, to use technology for the socioeconomic benefits, to reach out the poorest segments, the benefits of technology. Um, it's not going to end on laying off the optic fiber cable or providing rural telephony. We are also making um, 500 telecenters in the underserved, unserved areas. It's, a, it's around 18 billion rupees program. It's Pakistani rupees, which is a huge amount of funding for telecenters. But these are the kind of initiatives we are already taking in Pakistan for sustainable development. And this, these will be one of the few factors that we will um, demonstrate to the world that we, we can all, making when making the national goals, looking at, because looking at whatever resources we have got to achieve these goals, because not many countries will have a huge funding from their finance ministries coming in for uh, recognizing the, uh, the ICT for SDGs. We will have to see what are the different pools of funding available with the IT and telecom ministries, which in this case is the USF funding, and how we can then allocate this funding in a uniform manner with KPIs, uh, to ensure that we achieve the SDGs even before the next 15 years. Because you know it more than I do, the technology moves faster than the policy. So we probably would be looking at connectivity uh, uh, much earlier than that. But my, I'm urging uh, uh, on these platforms for the ITU to, to clearly identify uh, which agency of the United Nations is going to be the custodian of monitoring the implementation of the SDG and for them to prepare a clear guideline for the national governments to adopt with the KPIs and for a yearly monitoring to ensure that we are getting to the target. And finally, in a nutshell, we've got a, a, a very wide-ranging uh, audience here at ITU Telecom World, and we're going out to an even wider one uh, across the internet here. Just uh, what is your overriding message here? What would you like to particularly say here at ITU Telecom World? Uh, I would like to say uh, one thing uh, from the bottom of my heart, that we are all working on common agenda, and the common agenda is Internet for All. Internet of Things is the future. Um, the, the, the fine line between IT and telecom is already diffusing. Um, we are working for the welfare of the people. At the end of the day, it's about the people of this world, that we all feel that technology brings in the benefits, um, and, the, and the socioeconomic sector development is uh, one of, uh, the technology is one of the major enabler in that segment. But there is a dark side to it as well. The abuse of the internet uh, on different um, areas, for example, child pornography, uh, for example, terrorism. We need to start talking about how we keep keeping the positivity inter of internet, how we handle the menace or the dark side of the internet at the same time. Because we will together, as we are the custodians of the IT and telecom, we together have drafted this wonderful 
framework which has given us this advancement in technology, but we are also responsible for the dark side of it, and we all need to find out the minimum benchmarks that we need all need to take into consideration to protect the small children, to protect us young girls, and to protect all of us from the proliferation of terrorism uh, and abuse of internet. Um, this is important debate. Um, I'm not saying that we should be going towards internet governance. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying that we should be cognizant of the fact that these are also challenges and issues, and we should not be uh, conservative in talking about issues and finding solutions. Because if we don't do it today, it might become too late in time if we delay it for too long. Ms. Khan, thank you very much indeed mm -hmm. for being with us today. Thank you.